Today we're going to learn about proving triangles congruent by definition of congruent triangles. So, two figures are congruent to each other if they have the exact same size and shape. Triangle ABC is congruent to triangle XYZ. And when triangles are congruent to each other, their corresponding parts are congruent as well. So those are the parts that match each other. Looking at this congruent statement is very important, and I'm going to show you why. So notice angle A is congruent to angle X. Yep. Look at the statement up here. Do you see how A is the first letter and X is the first letter? Yes. Sometimes triangles are turned and you can't tell which parts equal each other. I know these are in the same location, so you can tell that A equals X. Uh-huh. But always look at the statement. So first letter goes with first letter. What do you think angle B is congruent to? X. Y. 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 Middle letter? Middle letter. B congruent to Y. What would C be congruent to? Z. Now when we name congruent sides, we name sides with two letters. So side AB, first two letters would be congruent to XY. First two letters. BC, Last two letters would be congruent to YZ, last two letters. Um, AC, first and last letter, would be congruent to XZ, first and last letter. Do you guys see how that works? Okay, so if I'm looking at this, triangle bad is congruent to triangle the. So angle B would be congruent to which angle? T. T. First letter goes to first letter. Um, angle A would be congruent to angle A. H. A. And angle D would be congruent to angle E. This book will always be that way. It will always. You always need to look at the congruent statement rather than the picture. I always just look at the statement over the picture. Bring them farted. Okay. B A is the first two letters. What would that be congruent to? T H. A B, last two letters. What would that be congruent to? A G. And then B D, first and last letter. What would that be congruent to? T E. So on your assignment, those first few problems are going to be like that. So. I'm pulling up the assignment. So on this one, K J is the last letter and then the middle letter. So K J would be congruent to C M. Always make sure you go in the same order. Same order. J B middle then first letter. So that would yes capitalize. So I'd have to go M L middle first letter. Um, when you do the triangles, like on part E. Triangle C M L goes last middle first. So it'd be K J B. So you have to make sure that you go in the correct order or it's gonna count it wrong. Brady, shut up. Okay, really. Guys. Alright, so um also you're gonna have some problems where you have to find the value of the variable. So there's gonna be some algebra. Again, match up your corresponding parts. So in this quadrilateral, J, I, H, K is congruent to Q, R, S, T. So if I want to find the A, do you see how A is on this side with H, I? H, I is the middle two letters. So that would be congruent to S, R, which is 6. So 3A equals 6, A would equal 2. Okay, let's try this one. If I want to find B, B is angle H, that's the third letter. What would that be congruent to on the other one? 120. S, 120. So 4B equals 120. Divide by 4, what would be B? What would, what's 120 divided by 4? 30. Okay, then if I wanted to find C, C is angle T here. C it goes with angle T, which is the last letter. So that's going to be congruent to angle K, last letter. So C plus 10 equals 30. C would be 20. So you will have some algebra problems to do as well after you do all the matching. Yes, algebra never goes away. Really? 
So, yeah, it never goes away. So, like on question number 12, 6x would equal, what do you think? 30. So, they need solve for x. Um, on number 13, 5x would equal 75, solve for x. So you will have to match corresponding parts to solve for the variables. Okay, third angles theorem. You're going to have some proofs on your assignment. And on those proofs, is everybody listening? Chloe, everybody got me? Okay, on these proofs, the third angles theorem will be one of the reasons. So let's think about this. If two angles in one triangle equal two angles in another, the third angles have to equal each other. Why do you think that is? Because there's no other angles. Because they add to 180. So exactly. if I know, yeah, if they all add to 180. If these two equal these two, the only other option is for the third angles to <laughs> equal each other because they all add to 180. Okay, so this is an example proof. You will have to do proofs on your assignment today. So I want to prove these triangles are congruent. And in order to prove that triangles are congruent, all six corresponding parts have to match up. All three pairs of angles, all three pairs of sides. So first I'm going to start with QN. It's marked here. QN congruent to OP. It's marked. And do you see how it's next to given? And QP congruent to ON. See how that's given and they're marked with the double slashes? So what do you think my reason is? Given. Given. Okay, this part is really, really important. Do you see how this triangle right here and this triangle right here has this side in common? Yeah. So wouldn't that side equal itself? Yeah. I'm going to mark it with three slashes. That is known as the reflexive property when something equals itself. And I have to say that that side, PN, is congruent to PN. So when triangles share a side, they're congruent to them itself. It's called the reflexive property. So again, in order to prove triangles are congruent, we have to know that all three corresponding sides match up, which I have all three sides right now. And then I also need all three pairs of angles. So the other part of my given says that angle Q is congruent to angle O, so I'm going to mark them with humps. <laughs> angle NPQ, NPQ is congruent to PNO. That's given. Now, why is that third angle equal to each other? Do you remember the name of that theorem? The Diagram Theorem? No. Oh my gosh. The theorem that we just did. The third angle theorem. If two angles in one triangle equal two angles in another, then the third angles have to equal each other. So third, what happened? Why did this go all off? Oh, I went to the wrong thing. So the third angles theorem. Finally, when we have all six corresponding parts matched, we can say that the triangles are congruent. That last statement is on the prove part because of definition of congruent triangles. So the last line today will be definition of congruent triangles every time. Definition of congruent triangles. Let me try one more proof. So again, we need all six corresponding parts. So angle L is congruent to angle P. Um, LM is congruent to PO. What, what do you think this whole statement reason is? What does it match with? Given. Given. Okay. So right now I've got all three sides marked, so I'm good. But I only have one angle marked. I need two more angles. Vertical angles we know are congruent. How could I name those vertical angles and say they are congruent to each other? Um, L M M congruent to P N O. Make sure N is in the middle. And it has to be in the middle. Okay, then what other angles would equal each other? What angles are left that I haven't marked yet? M and O. M and O. So angle M is congruent to angle O by the blank angles theorem. Third, angle. Third angles theorem. 
And then finally, we can say the triangles are congruent by definition of congruent, congruent, congruent triangles. triangles. Good. Ms. Brooke, I have a you what? A question on the assignment. Okay, we'll get there. I have some jokes, I think. Oh, I just thought this was cute. So, you know, the spider family sitting here, and look how sad he looks. Like, go easy on him, dear. Remember when you were little, you were a bed webber, too. I'll get it. Oh, he webbed I his bed. It. Instead of wetted his bed, he webbed it. <laughs> and then this one's just stupid. Four times four. four times That's an easy one, truck. Like, four by four. Oh. That one's just kind of yeah. cool. Okay, back to the assignment. So, Connor, what was your question? On oh, number six. Number six. Do you just want us to put, like, A? Like, okay, so band is congruent to luck. How do you want us to put our A? Oh, okay, so angle U. Yeah, just put an A. Okay, I'm confused on number seven. Make sure you get the letters in the right order and don't count it wrong. Number seven says triangle math is congruent to triangle tie. Angle A is congruent to I, so middle letter, middle letter. P is congruent to E, last letter, last letter. What's the relationship between M and T? Oh, okay. They're congruent, right? Yeah. And then if angle A is 52 and angle P is 36, what do all the angles in a triangle add up to? 180. 180. So do 180 minus 52 and 36 to figure out what B is. Okay. Um, the last ones are the proofs. Yeah. So, last ones are the proofs. You're going to have to just use the drop down and fill in. So, you'll be doing like vertical angles or third angles theorem, definition of congruent triangles. Remember that definition of congruent triangles is always where in the proof? Bottom. The very last the one. Last yeah. One. Last one. And anytime there's a word in a proof, the next line is definition of that word. Okay, keep that in mind. Okay, if you need help, let me know. You can.